Today I'm here with Colleen Echohawk, a member of the Pawnee Nation and executive director of the Chief Seattle Club. Colleen, thanks for spending some time with us today. I am glad to be here. So you seem to be everywhere in this city. <laughs> you're co-chairing the police chief's search. Uh -huh. You're leading a growing organization. Yeah. You're on many boards. Uh -huh. And I know you have seven siblings, and it uh -huh. seems like <laughs> one of them must be an identical twin, but I don't think that's true, is it? <laughs> no, it's not true. Not true. You're, you're, just, you're busy and involved. In I'm making busy a big and involved. I like people. I like, I'm one of those people that doesn't mind going to a lot of meetings. And I'm passionate about doing good for my community and doing good for the city. So I love this place. I love getting to be a part of kind of helping shape what it's going to look like in the future and being just in, involved in, in a person that people can reach out to for questions around what's going on here with our community and um, who are experiencing homelessness, who are native, and um, other, all the other things I'm involved in as well. Talk to us about the Chief Seattle Club. and you. Yeah. you uh, have been leading it for mm -hmm. a number of years, but it's, yeah. the organization has grown significantly yeah. on your watch, and yeah. we face many challenges yeah. in this city when yeah. it comes to homelessness. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's just a tremendous honor to work here. I'm actually in one of our spaces here at the Chief Seattle Club, and our mission is to create sacred space to nurture and affirm the spirit of urban Native people. And I was a board member first here, and I fell in love with that mission because I am very aware of how much Native space is needed in our city. You know, many of our, the spaces in our city and, 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 and just in general are, are really set up so that Native people kind of don't feel comfortable there, that's not their space. Um, and, and, so, and we're in a city named after and we're in, the yeah, chief, huh? we're in, Yeah, we're in a city named after chief. And we also have to recognize, you know, in like 1860, um, the city of Seattle had ordinances that said Native people can't be here. And so um, as I was a board member here and then I became the executive director, I really feel so strongly about creating a beautiful space for Native people to come and be with other Native people, to practice culture, to practice tradition, um, to find a place of healing um, for our community, and also just to remember our resilience. You know, I think that there are a lot of um, statistics out there about Native people that are hard to read, frankly, um, and, and hard to engage in. Um, but the reality is that we're very resilient people. We're still here. Um, we're working hard on behalf of each other. We're learning um, <clears throat> how to be um, strong representatives in the out in the in the non-native world. And um, I just love the work that we do here. So we do a lot here. Every year we do around 90,000 meals. Um, we have a very active kitchen going on all the time. We provide for all those basic services that you might need if you're experiencing homelessness, food, showers, laundry. And then we do a lot of other things too, like a full awesome art program. We have um, a mental health and chemical mm -hmm. dependency. We work in collaboration with the Seattle Indian Health Board, one of our strongest partners. We do so much with partners. Um, and we are, are really excited about a very robust rapid rehousing program. So and you've been having some recent success with that. We were just yeah, talking earlier about yeah. some of the, the placements well, you've made. One of our housing case managers housed 10 people wow. in one week. That is a really unheard of number. Like that, that has never happened here before. And um, we're just really excited about the potential of having a case manager who who looks like you, who understands the situation that you're in, in a very safe space. Again, back to that safe space, that's such an important part of the work we do here. When a Native person comes in this space, they feel welcomed and loved and know that they're going to be able to engage with someone who understands where they've, where they've come from and are gonna be able to walk with them towards that path, path towards housing. What's the, the state of Native homelessness yeah. in, the, in the city? And and where do we stand with yeah. that specific population yeah. relative to uh, other demographics that are experiencing yeah. homelessness? Well, we do have some very high rates of homelessness here in, in the city of Seattle. And if you are native and you live in this city, you are seven times more likely to be homeless. Um, we, um, in King County, there's about 80,000 urban native people. That means we make up less than 1% of the total population. But in the homeless population, we make over 7%. So that's a huge disparity. And that's something we're working on very actively. I started understanding some of these numbers and, and realizing how high these numbers were and how um, so many of our folks who are coming in to our doors at the Chief Seattle Club every day, um, they just, they weren't getting enough. And, and it was just, it just, 
kind of broke my heart, honestly. And so what we ended up doing in collaboration with my partners and other agencies, the Seattle Health Board, Mother Nation, United Indians of All Tribes, we brought together a coalition. We're called the Coalition to End Urban Native mm-hmm. Homelessness. And we really believe that part of our healing as a community is to take care of each other. You know, for many, many years, hundreds of years in our country, we were not allowed to take care of our children. Our children were sent off to boarding schools or um, were part of, um, you know, a terrible foster care system. And so, or we were not able to take care of our elders because many elders died um, very young. And so, I I believe this is our opportunity to to have a place of healing, to reconnect to each other as culturally, and really provide for each other. And so the coalition is is doing that. We're caring for each other, and we're offering um, resources and partnering together to take care of our elders, to take care of our children, to take care of our people who are suffering outside. So it's a pretty exciting place to be right now. So in a fast, this fast-growing city, reestablishing those community and family connections yeah. you see is key to the strategy of, yeah. of helping more people. Absolutely, and we're seeing it happen. We're seeing, you know, some amazing progress with like, you know, that those 10 people housed last year. We have a really exciting workforce development program that just that we just started. Um, we've been working on it for a, quite a while. Um, it's a collaboration with the Pike Place Market. Um, it's a project called Native Works, and mm-hmm. it's um, Native Works by Chief Seattle Club online. And it's a workforce development program. And so it's a trauma-aware, indigenous-informed workforce development program. We realized that many of our folks that were coming in here every day, they hadn't worked, some of them, in 20, 30 mm-hmm. years. One of our current apprentices had never worked before. Wow. And there's a lot of reasons for that, a lot of historical reasons where, you know, some of our, many of our members, they were um, they were Alaska Natives and they were in boarding schools and they didn't get to reconnect back with their families and homes. They didn't see that, um, what it was like to go out there and, be, and to be working and they became homeless. And so now we have this opportunity to um, create jobs within our organization. Again, a very safe place, a place where people feel comfortable and loved and welcomed. And so um, this program is so exciting where we have our apprentices every day making amazing jewelry and other products that is sold um, at the Pipe Place Market in the new expansion space. But what's exciting is that we had set a goal that by the end of 2018, we'd have 40 apprentices kind of interacting with the program. Mm -hmm. Um, However, we've already had way over 30. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we have so many people who want to be involved in the program, who want to get to work. It makes me and our staff so happy to be here at the Chief Seattle Club and hear one of our members say, oh, I gotta get ready for work. I'm going to work. We're like, yes. Like, we be- I really strongly believe that getting people back into work is part of that success, part of that path back into home and, and away from homelessness. So and it's really And you're really, really looking at sort of the full range of needs for the folks you're serving yeah. from hygiene and basic needs, housing, all the way through Yep, mental employment. health, yes, employment. We're trying to really do everything we can to be, to, to, to figure out a way to serve the whole person and be holistic about it. And you mentioned the word trauma uh-huh. earlier, yeah. and I know that you, under your leadership with your team and, yeah. and the board, you've done a lot yeah. of work to better position the organization, understand yeah. the trauma that the folks that yeah. you're trying to help and serve yeah. have dealt with in their past. Can right. you say a little bit more about yeah. what you've done there? Yeah, we're, we're, we're really working on um, understanding how we respond to the trauma, um, which I really believe is a part of the reason we have so much Native homelessness. You know, we have um, a lot of historical traumas in our background, and a lot of that is really recent, too. You know, we have um, people here at the Chief Seattle Club who had been in boarding schools and have, um, and then experienced the current trauma of just being homeless. Um, I think that can't be overemphasized how hard it is to be homeless, how hard it is to every day, you know, you know, trying to sleep on top of your backpack so no one steals it because everything, your whole life is in your backpack. Um, you know, protecting yourself constantly, like be, figuring out where you're going to get the next meal. You know, our shelter systems, you know, we have wonderful shelter systems, but making a shelter is hard. You know, I go home every night to a very wonderful, warm, clean bed and, you know, Many of our folks who are in shelters, they're sleeping next to someone. It, you know, it's clean, but it's 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 hard to be in a place that's not your own, mm-hmm. where you feel like you have some ownership. And so, 
Um, I think the trauma of being outside and sleeping or going through the shelter system is, is incredible. And we're trying to do our best here at the club to, to understand that trauma, you know, and our members are, are, are going through such hard times that they may be not they don't really recognize, oh, that's different. <laughs> or, uh, but, but I think that is slowly, slowly, we're building, we're building, we're building, um, on, on t- and we're working with someone until they kind of can get to that next spot, that next place, where hopefully, you know, they get into the workforce development program, and then they have greater access to our housing resources, and we move that person um, further down the path towards, um, you know, stability and housing. And while we're on the topic yeah. of housing, next yeah. door to where we yeah. stand today at Second and Yellow, You've got right. a project in the design phase. <laughs> yeah, we do. What will we see soon next well, door to where we stand today? Um, if all goes as planned, in April 2021, we will um, open our new um, low-income housing for Native people. It's going to be called, um, well, it'll be Chief Seattle Club Housing. We're still working on the name, but we're excited about 77 units of low-income housing for our uh, members who many are experiencing homelessness currently, we believe that this is the space for them. Mm-hmm. Again, that culturally appropriate space. So we're excited about 77 units of housing. Then we'll also have uh, a cafe on the street level and an art gallery. We really want to be a really work, warm and welcoming place for the community too. I think that one of the things I hear, you know, being out there in the community as much as I am, is that there are many non-native people who would love to engage with the native community, would love to um, be more involved, would love to support the work that we're doing, but maybe don't have access. So I'm very excited that you'll drive down Second Avenue, and you will see a very beautiful, um, vibrant native building um, right here in Pioneer Square where you can access it. You can come in and um, grab a cup of coffee, buy some artwork, support Native artists, support Native entrepreneurship. And um, we're also thrilled to have um, the Stanley Health Board will have a clinic there on site as well. Um, We'll continue our workforce development program in our basement, and we'll have more um, great places to do some counseling and case management as well. We're kind of running really tight. We're growing fast, as you mentioned. We have, at the end of this year, we'll have 30 staff. And, um, you know, that's triple um, what we were two years ago. So we're working really hard to um, find the right kind of, to manage our space we have now. So we're looking forward to that new space. Congratulations. You're adding much needed housing, but also building that connection between Native people and the the community here uh, in downtown. So thank you, Colleen, for joining us today to talk about your story and the story of the Chief Seattle Club. We'll see you next time for more DSA CityMaker Conversations.